Hey guys, this 2017 year in review show is brought to you in part by Oil Can Hancock's Man Spray. Take a whiff of yourself. Do you need to freshen up? Ditch those expensive colognes and overpowering teenage body sprays. Get yourself some Oil Can Hancock's Man Spray. These awesome scents are proudly built in America, crafted for those who aren't afraid to get dirty, and available at a great price. Oil Can Hancock has you covered, guaranteed. Use the code CABANA30 for 30% off your order, plus free shipping at B-U-Y-O-C-H dot com. That's B-U-Y-O-C-H dot com. Start smelling good. And now, start smelling good. This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler, Colt Cabana. It's Colt Cabana. All right. How you guys doing? Come on in. Sit down. Relax. You're about to listen to the art of wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's personal journals and entry into the minds and souls, the hearts and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I am a podcaster for a very long time now. I'm a United Airlines million miler. I'm a performer. I am not a foreign language speaker. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler. And I'm not coming to you live from my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. No, I am in a small, tiny Japanese dojo house in Shinkoyawa, Japan. And before I go any further, I want you to know this is a fan support and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. Give it to you free of charge every single Thursday, coldcommanda.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, tell a friend, tweet it out, Facebook it out. The best way that you can support, though, coldmerch.com, digitalcold.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, Wrestling Dreams, it's a children's book, the Wrestling Road Diaries, their documentary DVDs, micro brawlers, so much more. It's all available. It's a great way to support, coldmerch.com, digital colt.com oh just as i finished that and was about to start talking about um the podcast this week my space heater went out which is a thing that it does frequently here in uh, this little ddt dojo there's a space heater it's on otherwise it's freezing in this place and i don't even call it a house this place every now and then it will go off which is fine if i'm here and i can put it right back on but when you're uh, asleep in the middle of the night your space heater goes off and you wake up and you're freezing cold and you're like, why am I so cold? And then you look over and you're like, oh yeah, the space heater's not on. That could be a bit of a problem. Not a problem while I'm podcasting here for you guys. That's right. I am in Japan and it's fitting I'm on this journey while, uh, you know, I I say that there's going to be some changes to the podcast. I'm going to talk all about that at the very end. Sorry to put you on a cliffhanger. Um, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know how you're going to see it at home. Uh, I do know I appreciate you listening for the past Seven and a half plus years started in June 2010, and here we are. So last year, something I did, which I thought was a, a cool insight into the podcast, into uh, my mind as a podcaster, and how all the episodes came about this year, is we just kind of month by month went through the podcasts, and I kind of uh, told a little bit of a backstory of how they came about, why they came about, why they were a podcast, and a little bit of a director's cut, which I find fun because. I have had this conversation and somebody else, I don't know if I brought this to my own attention or someone said this, but I was a huge fan of DVD commentaries back in the day. And I think podcasts are basically the new DVD commentaries because the DVD commentaries aren't really a thing as much because not many people are buying the DVDs. I love how I say that knowing that I do have a DVD for sale, a physical DVD. And let the record show that Grado and I probably three times were meant to sit down and do a commentary over the movie Wrestling Road Diaries 3 and put it up for free on YouTube. But this boy, he wants to party, so it just never happened. And I hope to get that done sometime, sometime in 2018. If Grado and I are around each other, we can sit down, watch the movie together, and put that up for you guys. Sorry to tell you about something that isn't up and isn't there, but that was a plan that I had because I was a fan of DVD commentaries. And this essentially, I'd like to call this podcast the dvd commentary of 2017 so let's get into it i'll go month by month while i sit in this tiny little bed in japan and i speak to myself january january 5th bobby fish january 13th sammy callahan january 20th carrie silken january 27th hamilton ontario canada we did a live show with donovan dijack the smash brothers Stu stone dick justice and space monkey And remember, all of this stuff is coming off the top of my head, so I'm trying to remember, and especially the earlier ones are going to be, you know, from a year ago, so I don't know how fresh. I do remember 
we did the episode with Bobby Fish. It was a Ring of Honor show. I don't know exactly where, and I was happy to sit down. And this is kind of, you'll see a start of me starting back with Ring of Honor, so starting to kind of be in the locker room with a lot of the Ring of Honor guys and starting to have them back on the show. This is kind of a, an obvious part of it. Bobby, in this podcast, had lost his father, and then I think just a couple months later lost his mother. And that's something I took away from from the Bobby Fish podcast just the idea of podcasting and the idea of um, humanizing uh, the wrestlers, which is something I'm, I'm very proud of that I was kind of able to do. And so when you see a guy like Bobby Fish, you know, tweeting out that, you know, or Instagramming that he lost his mother, hopefully it's not something you pass over and something you really feel for with Bobby and his family and especially with his daughters. Sammy Callahan. Oh, man, I'm trying to remember all these. I think this was an AAW one. Sammy Callahan had just came back. Not just came back. Sammy, after asking for his own release, had kind of hit me up and said, hey, if you know, if you wanted to do a podcast, I'd like to do a podcast. And I don't know if that was a game plan for him. Sammy's very meticulous. If you haven't heard or seen, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's calculated. So maybe that was a move, part of his plan. But uh, as I say a lot of times, I, I like to let people wait out a little bit get out their frustrations. Maybe I don't want them to say anything stupid that they would the day or week or month after departing from such a huge thing in their life. I know that it was something I went through. So obviously I know it's something they're going through. So yeah, I think it was six or seven months later, Sammy and I sat down and Sammy was a repeat, something I don't necessarily like to do. But when they have new stories to tell, and by they, I mean wrestlers, they make for really fun conversations. Carrie Silken owned Ring of Honor. When I was 22 years old, I became friends with Kerry Silken. I'm now 37 years old. And he was very instrumental for me in my life at a time when I was 22, 23, and I decided to quit my job and become a full-time pro wrestler because I knew I was going to get those X amount of dollars every single month from Ring of Honor. They were not a lot, but I knew that that was a point in my calendar that was filled every single month, and I knew I had two or three or four dates that I could fill, guaranteed for the most part, and it was a start to try to make enough money to make a living. And that was Carrie. That was Carrie's literal money. He invested it into Ring of Honor. The paychecks, they came from him, and it was my pleasure to have Carrie on to kind of talk about that a little bit. And then in Hamilton, that's at the Alpha One show, and that seemed to be an ongoing thing. Ethan Page runs Alpha One. Ethan Page was on the show last year, but he runs Alpha One and always brings in some really good talent. So Donovan Dijak was able to get on the show. He didn't have a long-form sit-down, but he was on the show, which I'm happy about that. Hopefully one day becomes a huge star. He's now in the WWE. The Smash Brothers were guys I had done on premium podcasts, I think together at a time where I didn't want to have tag teams on because I like telling single stories i think the briscoes were the only ones that refused to do it separately they were like we're on together this was probably episode 16 or something like that the briscoes were on very early dick justice is always a fun live podcaster kind of guy space monkey i thought i could get on get a couple minutes out of him i, I, I like space monkey i think he's a fun wrestler he's not a guy you'd have on a whole show but maybe uh do some gags on the live show and Stu stone was in town I've talked about Stu Stone since day one with this podcast. Stu Stone and Cable Guy Jeff helped me put the whole thing together. And so it was, it was nice to have Stu on a show in front of a bunch of wrestling fans. And that was January. February, Molly Holly on the 3rd. February 10th, Juice Robinson. February 17th, Jessica Havoc. February 24th, Best Friends, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta. Chuck Taylor becomes an ongoing theme, I think, throughout this whole year. February 3rd, Molly Holly. I went over to her house. I was in Minnesota wrestling for First Avenue. Sean Devari and Ken Anderson had just started their Academy of Professional Wrestling, which is still going on in Minnesota if you want to be a trained wrestler. And that's going to be an ongoing theme of uh, this year also is Ken Anderson and Sean Devari harping on me to try to get advertisements for their school. That's a big thing. Hey, can you help us advertise? Hey, can we get on the podcast? Both, I don't think, know what a podcast is or the idea of like how I like to run it and how it's not like, hey, somebody's on every other week to be on a show. But in Sean's mind, that's how this works. So I told Sean, listen, I can't have you on 8 million times, but who can I have on to promote the school? And Molly Holly is doing training over there. And I was like, oh, that would be wonderful. I'd love to have Molly on. 
we have a rapport. We were friends from being around wrestling, but then also at uh, Davari's wedding, Sean Davari's wedding years ago, Molly and I kind of hit it off a little bit. So it was, it was more than just like hi and bye. We were actual friends. And so that made it easy to head on over to a house, do a little podcast, and then head on over to the First Avenue show. February 10th, Juice Robinson. This was at a Ring of Honor Atlanta, Georgia show. And no real crazy story behind it. I remember it was after Center Stage in Atlanta, Georgia, where all the WCW tapings used to happen. Jessica Havoc and I podcasted in AAW in LaSalle, Illinois, where Dreamwave Wrestling used to be. And LaSalle, Illinois. Now, see, I have the mental picture right now, but it's just these real dingy VFW basement looking rooms. And there's like 20 different little tiny rooms back there. But you can hear everybody through the walls because they're not real rooms. They're just wood nailed up to a wall to separate people. But I think it was at a time where people weren't really talking around us. So we were able to get some quiet. And Best Friends and I, podcasting in Austin, Texas, Chuck Taylor and Trent. At this point, I'd gone through a lot of people. I have podcasted with a lot of people and saying to myself more, hey, let's get a fun one out. Make sure that there's a fun one in the bank. And you can always count on Trent and Chuck to just uh, be fun with the podcast. And a lot of people reacted to that one because they had a fun time. We did their show basically on my podcast. They have a show on High Spots that you can watch on their network, which is kind of uh, ridiculous. And I think they're well aware of that. In March, March 2nd, Eli Drake, before he became a Impact Wrestling champion. March 9th, Christina Von Erie. March 16th, Dean Allmark. March 23rd, South by Southwest with Jeff Cobb, Doug Benson, Leva Bates, and Chris Cubis. March 30th with Frankie Kazarian. On March 2nd, I was doing a Rise seminar in California and wrestling on a show put on by AWS Bart. That's what I know him as. If you go on the internet, there's like a match with me and Brian Danielson and Frankie Kazarian from like 2003 in California. And it's from AWS at Frank and Sons Collectible, a very famous, infamous wrestling spot in Southern California. And that was the weekend I podcast with both Eli Drake and Christina Von Erie. Eli, I had known since, you know, the early days of this very podcast, actually, when I was going out and wrestling for Dave Marquez a lot. In championship wrestling from Hollywood, he was Sean Ricker out there. He was managed by Paul Bearer, and I guess if I want to sidetrack a little bit, sadly, Paul Bearer is somebody I was trying to get the courage up to ask to be on a podcast for years. I was always doing shows with him. We were very friendly, but there was, there's this point of, I guess it is, like getting the courage to ask somebody to do it. Every time I'd go out to L.A. and Paul would be on the show, I would be closer and closer, and sadly... Um, as he passed, obviously, that wasn't something I was able to do, and it's something I always think about. And I think about all the people who have kind of passed, who I was very kind of close. Viscera and I, we were going to do a podcast, and he passed. That, those are the first, those are the two that come to mind, Viscera and Paul Bear, but there were a couple others. And Paul Bear, he would manage Eli Drake. Christina Von Erie was in love. She was about to marry Scotty Mack, and now they're married, and they're the king of queen of Vancouver. Dean Allmark was a fun one to have on. You haven't listened to that one. The king of the camp shows in England. He's been doing it for years, wrestling 300 matches a year. One of those fun guys that I'm able to meet because I get to travel all over the world and meet different wrestlers. That was done at a PCW show while in Preston, England. Hope to be back for PCW uh, in 2018. South by Southwest. This was put together by Wrestle Circus, but this was at the very South by Southwest. They had a podcast stage. It was not put together very well. I'm glad to say that I was told that the Art of Wrestling had the best audience size-wise and encouragement-wise at the podcast stage at South by Southwest. I think South by Southwest just thought if they put up a thing called podcast stage that people would just all just come. And they had a lot of random people doing podcasts, but I don't think they had any real fans. So nobody came to them. But I mean, luckily, I had a nice little show lined up and we had the Wrestle Circus show that night. So it kind of all came together and made for a real fun podcast. Also, shout out to the guys who did the podcast after me. It was a podcast called Crime and Sports. And I had never heard of them, but they were there listening to my podcast because they were about to go on after me. And I encouraged everybody to stay for their podcast. And then we started talking a little bit afterwards and 
Crime and Sports. It's a podcast about crime and sports, but they did a bunch of podcasts about pro wrestlers because they consider pro wrestling a sport, and God bless them. Johnny K-9, Hard Body Harrison, Rock and Roll, Buck Zumhoff, which was an amazing episode, which is so crazy because when I started this podcast, Rock and Roll, Buck Zumhoff is somebody I envisioned having on the show telling their story. What if he told that story of what a piece of shit he turned out to be? And you can listen to how big of a piece of shit he was on the Crime and Sports podcast with Rock and Roll, Buck Zumhoff. But for my show at South by Southwest, that was the first time we saw Jeff Cobb. We'd see Jeff Cobb later. Blue Pants, Leva Bates was on the show. And then I get to have two comedians on because it's South by Southwest. And I love comedy. And I love people who come on and correlate the world of professional wrestling and comedy. Chris Cubis is an amazing comedian out of Texas. Huge wrestling fan. He killed it on the show. Doug Benson is a guy who has me on his Doug Loves Movies podcast all the time. I love his podcast. So it was my kind of, hey, if I could do anything for you, maybe you want to come on my podcast. It's not like you need it. I mean, he's super famous, but he does love movies, and uh, I really enjoy talking about movies on the podcast with Doug Benson. So March 30th, to cap off March, Frankie Kazarian came on the show, and this was an important one for me to have on because I'm not going to say why, but Frankie wasn't my favorite person for a long time, and it was petty shit on my part, and I know you want me to get into it, but I'm not going to get into it. But luckily... We've become friends over the last couple of years, especially being on the Ring of Honor shows, and uh, I was super happy to have Frankie on and tell his story, which is another long one. You know, we are guys who've been doing this a long time, a long time, and we have journeys, we have stories, and we have variations to our lives. In our long-term story, it isn't like, oh, we were also wrestlers and we were something else. Our long-term story is we are wrestlers, and then there's little stories in between that. In April, April 6th, Christian, April 13th, Jeff Hardy, April 20th, Caprice Coleman, April 27th, Kenny Dextra. Christian and Jeff Hardy were both done at WrestleCon. There were a lot done at WrestleCon. This was WrestleMania weekend. Christian had just started a podcast, the ENC podcast, which I believe is still going and doing pretty well. Him and Edge are uh, doing a podcast. And so I knew maybe that'd be a good opportunity to be able to promote his new podcast a little bit and also have him on the show. Uh, I went to his house, we podcasted, and then I took him to the airport, <laughs> which is stuff that you don't hear about. We were both flying out for some reason. I think he was going to a hockey game. Would that make sense? In April, he was doing something, and I was leaving for back home in Chicago. Jeff Hardy did a podcast the night before WrestleMania at like 2 a.m., <laughs> and I didn't know, and he didn't know, and I think that says a lot about Jeff Hardy, how this faith, how this first came up. Uh, we've been friends for a while. We've been on the same shows for a long time. At a WrestlePro show in New Jersey, ran by the wonderful Pat Buck, I was in the same locker room with Jeff and Matt, and we were just talking about the podcast and talking about podcasting, and Jeff was there. And I casually said, like, oh, man, I'd love to have you on, you know. And he was like, oh, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm good on those things, but, I, you know, I'd love to be on. And that's what I need, like, in my head is that snap of, like, just someone being encouraging about wanting to be on again it's not like oh yeah i guess i'll do it it's like oh man that yeah of course and when i see that in their eyes or their attitude that makes me happy and so we were trying to put it together and this was a weekend that i thought oh this would work wrestlemania weekend he's going to be around and he was and he podcasted two in the morning and then the next morning he woke up and redebuted at wrestlemania which obviously he didn't have to do my podcast he wasn't ever going to be i think he knew he wasn't ever going to be able to do it afterwards so that was the only time it was ever going to get done, and to his word, he did it. So uh, I'll always have that high appreciation for Jeff Hardy. And in it, we talked about doing a concert, and I know he went and did a concert, so I'm weirdly proud of him. Caprice Coleman was done at a Las Vegas show for Ring of Honor. Kenny Dykstra was done in England, that same PCW show. So you can see sometimes I space them out. March 16th, Dean Allmark was done during that same PCW weekend, Kenny Dykstra, April 27th. So that was a whole month later, and I probably wasn't in England. It was probably February, so I sat on that one for a while. Why do I sit on them? I don't know. I just space them out the way I like to. They're all evergreen, so they don't need specific timing. May 4th, Alex Porto. May 11th, John Morrison. May 18th and May 25th, both WrestleCon shows. Alex Porto is another person who in my mind, was somebody I wanted on the podcast from the very beginning when I thought up this podcast. 
It was stories like him. I remember rooming with him at a show in FIP. I had just wrestled. He had just wrestled Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. And I remember at that time, you know, we were like 25 or 26. And here was the indie workers wrestling the guys who were on WWE Livewire or whatever it was and thinking, wow, what a crazy crossover that our world is. And I knew that one day that was going to be a story. The idea that Daniel Bryan wrestled the pug. At the same time, I remember Brian, because Brian, even back then, 10 years ago, was just like the Lou Fez of independent wrestling. He was just killing it. He was so, I don't know, I don't say wise beyond his years, but just in control. He was a real wrestler's wrestler. And I remember Dave Marquez put him against Kamala. And I remember telling Gabe he should book him versus Dan Severin. <laughs> Gabe did book him against Alex Porto, and I thought that was amazing. John Morrison was promoting his movie, Boone the Bounty Hunter. Go get it. And the two WrestleCon shows, the live WrestleCon shows, let's see, D'Lo Brown, Conan, Borash, Marty DeRoso joined me for both of those, of course, Jack Evans, Blue Meanie. Uh, I'll just get on D'Lo. D'Lo is somebody I've wanted to have on the podcast a long time. He's a friend, but he kind of got distant a little bit here and there and wouldn't come on sometimes or wouldn't reply to a text when I was uh, in Las Vegas, but he was happy to come on for these. Mr. Hughes, I don't know. I, th- I thought it'd be funny. Marty Gennetti. That was that was a you know I, we laugh about Marty Janetti, but he's I don't know maybe uh, DDP is somebody we should be contacting for about Marty Janetti. That's a that's a, a real one. Also Pete Gas Pete Gas has to be on the show a bunch of times to promote his book. So I said, hey WrestleCon, why don't you come on and promote the book? And he did. June first, Larry Zabisco. June eighth, Tyson Dukes. June fifteenth, Jeff Cobb. June twenty second, Trevor Lee. June 29th, Kevin Thorne. The Larry Zabisco one is one of the most fun I've had. It was done at Chase and Rance's school, live in front of an audience, but it was just me doing a podcast how I would do it. It was very intimate, but very cool. He had no clue what a podcast was. Didn't understand why we were just recording audio, but he was just like, yeah, whatever, I'll go with the flow. Tyson Dukes, I did on a show promoted by Scott Demore. In Windsor, Canada, we did it in Scott Demore's house, which is about the size of 12,000 houses put together. Good Lord, is that guy living the good life. Jeff Cobb and I did a show together in Arizona. We stayed up late. He podcasted in my room. Trevor Lee podcasted in the studio apartment, which is no longer mine anymore. And Kevin Thorne and I podcasted in a legit cracked out hotel in Cleveland, Ohio during the J-Lit tournament, which usually AIW, they get the good hotels, but I think that hotel was booked out, so we went in the legitimate crack house i guess i can't say legitimate crack house but the hallways smelled like crack they had an aura of crack it was definitely a a cracked out hotel july 7th matt cross july 14th djz july 21st keith lee july 28th one of the first edinburgh previews that i did with marty DeRosa. matt cross was a on the very early podcasts and he had such a I wouldn't say life change, but he's been he's been so many different places. He's been doing so many different things, and it was great to have him on again. But you know, five, six, seven years later, DJZ, same thing. I remember doing a first podcast with him at the Congress Theater during a Lucha Vavoom show very early on. He might have just started with Impact Wrestling. We did this one in my apartment. Also, he lives in Chicago. This is a couple blocks down from me, actually. Keith Lee, we did in Chicago at a hotel. Then we get to August. The third was another Edinburgh preview I did with Brendan. I'll talk about the previews with Brendan and Marty together. Then it was the month of live shows because I was at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. The 10th was a live show in Chicago. The 17th was a live show in Cleveland. The 24th was a live show in Australia. The 31st was a live show in Glasgow. So the two previews with Brendan and Marty. Brendan and I were doing our comedy show where we watch bad wrestling and we do commentary over it. So I tried the audio version of it. And I think it came out fun. I was hoping maybe it was something that would be able to be turned into a real podcast, something I could do weekly with different comedians or something, but I don't think that's the case. Maybe something down the line. The Chicago Shows is a show I did at Brick and Brack Records, which is down the street from me. Chuck Taylor came on once again, and he did a list of names that he made up that I put on a YouTube clip of just him naming those names. Bobby Fish, Marty and Sarah of Marty Sarah Love Wrestling, Eddie Kingston came on. In Cleveland, that was before the J-Lit tournament. Adam Cole, who had just signed with WWE, was nice enough to come on the podcast and do one last live podcast with me. Britt Baker, Joey Janelle is a guy who's uh, getting a lot of buzz, very funny on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And Tom Lawler, somebody kind of coming back into wrestling. 
from fame in the UFC, I thought it would be nice to have him on. In Australia, Tommy Dreamer, Matt Cross, Hornswoggle, and Jack Swagger. Sadly, the audio was just awful, which is funny because the guy was setting up and like bragging about his audio skills. And when I got back, he didn't plug in a microphone. So I had Bull James on the show too, but you couldn't even hear anything he said because of the microphone and it kept on cracking. So sadly, I had to edit him out of that. That's the lost Bull James in that Australia podcast. And in Glasgow, before one of the ICW shows, Jody Fleisch, Lionheart, and Billy Kirkwood. September 7th, Dalton Castle. September 14th, Ken Anderson and Sean Devari. They come back on promoting that school. The 21st player, Uno. The 28th, Joe Coffey. Dalton Castle was somebody, a great example of being around somebody, making friends with somebody, and then having them on the podcast. He was so obnoxious when he was younger and putting on a show, which shows in his character. He's, you know, he's always putting on a show. And I think as a wrestler, he's always putting on a show. But the real person, which is what this podcast is, is able to break them down a little bit and show a human side. So the year with Ring of Honor that I did, the program I did with him, I was able to see a human side, a human side that I enjoyed. And it was fun to have Dalton on. Ken and Sean. Hey, man, we got a new class starting up. We really like to promote our school. Please help us promote our school. Can we be back on the podcast again this week? Oh, you guys don't understand how this podcast works. Fine, I'll have you on together as a fun dynamic. And it was fun. Something you will never know about this podcast, but now you know. We started for the first, I'd say, 10 minutes. And I, Davari was talking about cleaning products for 10 minutes. And so I literally stopped it and restarted it. And uh, it came together a lot better after the restart. Marty was in the room the whole time and noticed the manicness of the cleaning of Sean Navari. Player your Uno, that was so the Smash Brothers. I said I didn't want him on as a tag team. Finally, I was able to have him on singles. And Joe Coffey and I, we podcasted in Glasgow at the ICW show. And I always liked the idea of going over somewhere international and making sure the wrestlers who are killing it over there are represented you know, on this, I guess, American-style podcast. October 5th, Todd Sinclair. October 12th, Frankie the Mobster. October 19th, Pro Wrestling Fringe, Dog Legs. October 26th, New York City live podcast of the Now Here This Podcast Festival. Todd Sinclair is a guy who, he always said, when you run out of people, you'll have me on the show. I ran out of people. Todd Sinclair was on the show. He was great to have on. Frankie the Mobster is one of those characters. Just a crazy, awesome dude. And I was able to do a show in the Montreal area, and I was able to have him on the show. Uh, I do the Pro Wrestling Fringe, which you have to pay for on Stitcher Premium, but I was promoting three new episodes. So I wanted to put out this Dog Legs episode because Heath Cousins made this wonderful movie, and it's available to buy, and not enough people knew about it or promoted it, and I wanted to do my part. And I think the dogleg story is just so fun and amazing that I wanted to produce this piece with Heath Cousins. So I put that one out to promote the new Pro Wrestling Fringe episodes that I did. And then at the Now Hear This Festival, Ryback came on, Bobby Lashley came on, and Sam Roberts came on. The night before, Bobby Lashley and I wrestled, so we had an easy rapport. And also, Impact was trying to do their best to get their wrestlers out there, so that was kind of an easy one to put together. Ryback had a a podcast after me, and Sam Roberts was doing his podcast before me, so it was a little wrestling circle that we were doing. We kind of all traded some guests, so that that was easy to do. In November, November 2nd, Hangman. November 9th, The Elite. November 16th, Jay White. November 23rd, Nick Mondo. November 30th, Player Dose, Stu Grayson. The Hangman and I did a podcast, I think, in Pittsburgh, at a Ring of Honor show. The Elite and I did our podcast in Columbus at a Ring of Honor show. That was the same weekend for those Ring of Honors. Jay White and I had planned this podcast. We did an IWC show together, I think in the summer. And I said, hey man, when are you leaving to go back to New Japan? And he said, I think October or November. I said, let's make sure we do a podcast before you leave back for New Japan to kind of finish out the whole young boy excursion to America and then we'll be able to play it like as you debut in New Japan. And that's what we did. Nick Mondo had put out a movie. This is the rare instances where somebody kind of reached out to me. And I was like, yeah, because a lot of times people reach out to me. And I'm like, no, I, you know, if I, not a thing like if I want you to the podcast, I'll ask you to be on the podcast. But that's kind of how my, my brain works. Or like I have a specific person in mind that I'd like to do the podcast because I have a rapport with them because they are my friends. Right, I hope that makes sense. So people asking me to be on the podcast who I don't know who they are, I'm not going to have a rapport and I'm not going to be able to talk 
about anything with them in a casual, fun way. Nick Mondo and I had been wrestling together for years, and we had had casual conversations, and we were friendly over the years. And he was always somebody I thought about having on the podcast, but I, you know, he was living in Japan, so what was I going to do? Well, now he's back in California. He's trying to promote this movie. So great. I get to have him on. And Player Dose finishing up the Super Smash Brothers duology, not to be confused with the trilogy. December 7th, Gainesville at the Fest. December 14th, Animal December 21st, last week, Alex Shelley. So the Gainesville podcast was, I think, my favorite live podcast that I've done. Chuck Taylor, again, you just have him on the show because you know he's fun. Same with Matt Cross. You have him on the show because you know he's fun. You've been on tours with these guys over the years. You've been on a million shows with them. You know you have a good rapport with them. Eric Cannon, same thing. And uh, I get to have Chris Gethard on the show because I'm a huge fan of his show and he's a good friend of mine. And also he can bring the fun. Also, I got to have Riley Solner on the show, Vacation Jason. And I know he's a huge wrestling fan. And so it was a treat for me to get to have him on the show. Road Warrior Animal. He was going to be the last one this year. But I finally convinced Alex Shelley to come on the show. Uh, I was going to kind of wind out the year with Road Warrior Animal. The idea of, I don't know, these guys that I watched as a kid. Chicago-based team, quote-unquote. I know. I know they're from Minnesota. But as a kid, you're like, oh, my God, they're from Chicago. They're representing Chicago. I'm from the Chicago land area. And he's been really instrumental with One Hour Tees. He's been all in. And Alex Shelley also came on the show. Finally convinced him to come on the show. I said, listen, we're kind of wrapping it up here, buddy. I'm going to give you one last opportunity. I'd really love you to ha- I'd really love you to be on. And he was like, oh, man, really? You're wrapping it up? And I was like, yeah, man. And he's like, oh, man, then I got to do it. I was like, yeah, you got to do it. And so we did it, and he came on the show. And that is leading us today to an announcement. Oh, no, Colts, are you wrapping up the show? Is this it? Well, I got some good and some bad news for you. The bad news is gone are going to be the days of the long-form, one-on-one, sit-down, find-a-space See who's on a show, stress out about what shows you're doing with what people to make sure that you have a guest so you can put out a show every single week. And I know that's going to be sad. Listen, it's sad for all of us. For the ones, and I'm right now I'm talking to the people who have been on board for so long and have listened to me every single week. And don't worry about who the guests are, just like the idea uh, of a conversation about this wacky world of professional wrestling. And over the years... Sadly, I have noticed the idea of the long-form conversation with a wrestler popping up each week get less and less exciting because of, I don't want to say the saturation of the market, but in 2010, when I was hearing Chris Hardwick and Mark Marin and even people like, I would listen to the Jimmy Dore podcast. There was a comedian named Cameron Buckholtz. He would have these people on. He would have these amazing conversations. And comedians, the same way that people saw wrestlers, these characters who just go on stage, tell jokes, and then leave, and we never know anything about them, were telling me, the listener, Colt Cabana, their personal lives. And I was becoming even bigger fans of them because I felt I knew them as a person. And nobody was doing that in wrestling. And when I started doing that, I knew how special that was, and I wasn't worried about numbers, and I wasn't worried about advertising. I just loved the idea of humanizing my friends and letting people who love wrestling get to know who the people they go and watch in the ring and then leave, and they only get to see them for 10, 20 minutes. They'll get to know exactly who they are and their story. And as the years have gone by, and I, you can listen back to the old podcasts where I said that, like, listen, I know that the podcast boom will happen in wrestling. You know, I said this very early, and I was just very happy to be on the early side of it. So as the podcast boom in wrestling did start to happen and is happening, a lot of wrestlers and wrestling personalities started doing shows where these long form conversations would come out and people would understand who people are behind the curtain a little bit and behind the character. And I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing for us as professional wrestlers to be able to go on shows where people can understand us as humans and not just think of us as their jesters, right? People that just go out there and, hey, do stuff for us, 
entertain us and then I will never think about you and not realize that you have families and problems and and maybe even money situations or whatever it might be. So in 2011, when I asked Kevin Steen to come on the show, I'm so excited for people to learn his story. And the day I drop it, I get so excited, so excited for people to understand who he is as a person. And now in 2018, this is something that's going to happen every week with Kevin. So I'm doing what they call in the business a pivot, something that will get me excited to put out the show every week. When I started this show, a lot of it was about my friends in wrestling, but it was also about my journey. And all of you guys have been on this journey with me for years now. And I'm 37 years old, and I'm kind of starting a different journey. I'm kind of starting the older guy still being an independent wrestler, but still making a great living and wondering where it's going and why it's going and what these ventures are all about. So starting, I believe in March, I'm going to be documenting the week of my wrestling on the podcast. I guess a little miniature wrestling road diaries of the art of wrestling. And this is going to be very new to me. The idea is those opening monologues that some of you like and some of you dislike. So if you dislike it, then maybe I'm going to lose you as a, as a listener, which, which is sad to me. But it's going to be the idea of the opening monologue, I guess on steroids a little bit, spruced up with clippets of stuff that's happened to me during the week. I'll be carrying the recorder. I'll have a recorder with me, and I'll splice it in between the idea of me saying what's happening in my week and just different stuff that I've been doing. So it's not a recap of Raw. It's not a recap of SmackDown. It's a recap of this journey that I've been doing for a long time, but in a different style. I hope that makes sense. I hope you understand that. So for the first two or three months, I'm going to be putting out older shows, older podcasts I did with different guests, but I'll still be doing my monologues and I'll still be doing the upcoming events. And then in a couple of months time, we're going to start fresh We're going to have a new beginning, and either we're going to ride this new journey into the new sunset, or I'll die on my sword, and we'll call it a podcast life. But that's the announcement. If you have any questions, next week I'm doing an AMA. Send a voice memo asking your question, who you are, where you're from, and your question to coltwrestling at gmail.com. It's my very public email, and I'll answer it on the show. So I hope some of that made sense. I don't know. In my head, I have this big speech, but I don't, right? Sometimes I'm such a good little talker boy, and sometimes I'm just fucking awful. Maybe because I'm sitting in this small little Japanese dorm, and the space heater is just boiling my nuts right now. (laughs) That was a little crass, sorry. And I knew there would be a day, I guess, where I would stop these conversations and something I would say, like this big speech, but I, I guess I don't really have it. I, to me, it's another. To me, it's another part of the journey, just moving forward, not looking back. That was something I did, and this is going to be something I will be doing. And I'm also doing my life, doing a business, and you know I got plugs and upcoming events. Nothing crazy. Coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana. The Facebook's AOW Podcast slash Colt Cabana. Pro Wrestling Fringes, you should be listening to them. StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt. Get a free month. Colt Wrestling at gmail.com. My YouTube channel, ColtCabana.com, is my website. I got a new P.O. Box, so you can send something new to the new P.O. Box when I get home. Upcoming, I've got five shows on this tour for DDTPro.com and DDTUniverse.com if you want to watch them. My next shows are the 30th, 31st, and January 3rd. So if you're coming for the Dome, you should come for these shows. They're at Corican Hall. January 6th, I'll be in Minneapolis, Minnesota for Facebook slash First Wrestling. Friday, January 12th, across Wisconsin, Facebook slash River City CW. Sunday, January 14th, Chicago, Illinois, Facebook slash Zello Pro. Saturday, January 20th, I'll be doing some commentary in Nashville for ROHWrestling.com. And Friday, January 26th, Winnipeg, Canada, Facebook slash Primo's Exhibition 2. As always, huge thank you to you guys at home for listening. Thank you to DDT for giving me this small little studio space to do this year-end review podcast. Stu Stone and Cable Guy, Jeff, Kid Russell, Matt Jangs with music, Dane Miller and Creaky are always helping for tech when I need them. I do have sponsors. Highspots.com has been with this show since day two. Amazing. They have a VOD service. They have AMA knee pads. They have gear. They have wrestling masks. They have a wrestling ring you can buy. OneHourTees.com, they've been with me for so long. We started ProWrestlingTees.com. They now have a store. 
you can go in Chicago and buy some stuff. Tweakedaudio.com slash cult. The earbuds that I use get over 30% off free shipping just because you listen to the show. So there it is. I welcome, uh, I do welcome feedback or help or ideas. I know that's something I've said in the past that I wasn't really interested in. Not that I won't say that. But I knew what I wanted my show to be for so long. I knew that I wanted a sit-down podcast. And there wasn't really much that, I don't know, maybe I was really selfish or had my own ways. But now I kind of see this as a fresh canvas. I do know that I want to do something documentary-wise. But it's going to be interesting to see how to whip it up. Because it's going to be a process. I kind of want to give myself less work. I feel I'm going to give myself more work, which is going to be scary, but I think it's something that's going to excite me to put something out every single week, something that's different also, and um, that's always something I've been proud of, is how different my show has been, and I'm not going anywhere. You still hear from me every single week, if that's something you enjoy listening to, so I'll be here every week, and I hope you'll listen. All right, we're doing an AMA next week. This has been The Art of Wrestling for Cole Cabana. I'm Cole Cabana. Thanks. Thanks.